James Kaufman, World News Report today. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just had an X 1.99 solar flare and associated coronal mass ejection that happened right at 2.30 UTC time, 9.30, well, central time here in the U.S. So just a few minutes ago, you can see that we're still in M territory. And it looks like it wants to shoot back up. The crazy thing about this is this did not come from the complex sunspot that NASA warned us about. This came from a yet unnamed sunspot group that should become named tonight. And I think it will be AR4277. Let's take a look. This is crazy. We're about to heat up for the next 12 to 14 days. Uh, it's going to be a dangerous situation. All right. Noah says we had a X 1.9. We saw X 1.99 solar flare with a strong radio blackout, an R3 strong event. This flare was probably much larger. It was partially eclipsed by the limb. The incoming limb of our sun, uh, and this is not even one of the sunspot groups that's been named yet or discussed by NOAA as being a problem. This is going to be a crazy two plus weeks here. Y'all get ready to rumble. And here we have an X 1.9 R3 star radio blackout occurred at 2.49 UTC time. So that's 9.49. Just a few moments ago, central time here, you can see it came from an unnamed and unnumbered active region just rotating on the visible disk in the solar northeast top left. Analysis will be conducted on any coronal mass ejections associated with this flare as imagery becomes available. Now, ladies and gentlemen, since we had such a strong radio blackout, and it looks like the flare was directed in this direction, I'm thinking that we're going to have problems from this X flare. You know, it doesn't hit our GOES satellite that's only 22,000 miles above Earth from 93 million miles away, unless we're also going to have trouble down the road from the coronal mass ejection. So what have we seen so far? The X-rays and the protons. That's what we're seeing so far. Well, I don't think the protons are hitting quite yet. Now, the sunspot that Noah warned about earlier today that was a simple sunspot has now become a Delta-class sunspot, the most complex sunspot that we know about. That's AR4294. The sunspot that created this X1.95 or 1.99, depending on who you ask, well, it has not even been named yet. It will be named AR4297. That's my best guess here. We only had a 20% chance of having an X-class solar flare today, a 70% chance of an M-class solar flare today. And I will say uh, we've been running a heavy C baseline. Headed over to STO, HMI, and Tensogram, we see we have a total of six named sunspots that are Earth-facing. We have a Beta Gamma sunspot right here, AR4291, that hasn't given us any trouble thus far. And this is the sunspot that Noah and Ness came out and warned us about, I believe, yesterday. AR4294, it's now a Delta-class sunspot group. Now, we had two additional sunspot groups named today, AR4296 and AR4295. And the X-class solar flare came from up here. You can see this region up here. It's probably going to be named AR4297 by morning. And that's where it came from, right there. Now, I didn't see the protons move at all. Uh... Maybe, maybe they are going to move. I didn't see any type of proton acceleration. We will check before we go. Let's get us up to 
time of the impact. Wow. That's just a baseline flare there. And here comes the impact. Can you imagine when this sunspot and the other ones around it are all facing us? It is going to be heck, to say the least. That looked like a fairly long-term solar flare, although it sure didn't look long-term on GOES. That was an R3 radio blackout. I have some question about that. The radio alternation does not look very severe whatsoever. And this is 249 right here. Get it at exactly 249 when it peaked. And that's the peak right over Australia and Indonesia there. Well, again, it looked very long term there for being such a quick peak on our GOES x-ray flux. Those are x-rays hitting the ground here. Uh, so I was expecting protons, but they might not be earth directed, which would be a plus. Now for the seemingly good news. Now we did have some bumps in the road with our GOES proton flux over the last several days, but this last flare didn't seem to affect it. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, obviously, we're not in space weather alert threshold quite yet, not even close, and it doesn't even look like it moved. So maybe, maybe the majority of all the protons and the coronal mass ejection itself are going to completely miss our planet, although we sure got nailed by the X-rays. Although that did not look like an R3 radio blackout to me on our absorption prediction uh, model there. It really didn't look like there was a lot of radio alternation whatsoever. Just one man's opinion, right? And it does look like it's coming on down, but that's going to be another sunspot to worry about. It's like we're going to have several that are going to be Earth-facing for quite some time. It usually takes about 12 days for a sunspot to transit the Earth-facing side our solar disk so we know we're in trouble for at least the next 12 days based on this sunspot group that's still unnamed that is just coming around the limb that said god bless each and every one of y'all please share and subscribe and always remember anything is possible in bizarro world